Hello everyone, this is Hef from Shield K9 and this is our boy Logan we have here. He's aboard and trained. He's been here for some dog reactivity, some reactivity to vehicles and a little bit of aggression. He's not too bad. He's not the worst case we've had here. We see a lot of German Shepherds like this. They all have a little bit of suspicion in them, right? It's natural to the breed and a lot of the time people just let it go unchecked and it gets worse and worse over time and he kind of builds his own association to other dogs and vehicles and I'd rather build a positive association and a healthy association. So today we're kind of just be taking him through the paces, walking him around, having him meet other dogs here. I'm going to show you guys how to have a good meeting, what a good meeting is, kind of what to look out for, what to watch for, when you need to end the interaction, right? The key phrase today is going to be short and sweet. Guys, just a quick clarification on this topic before we go any further. We are not telling you to take your reactive dog out and force him to interact with strange dogs. That's definitely not something that we tell you to do or that we advocate that you do. Um, in fact, that is very counterproductive. A big thing that we do here is we actually minimize and almost completely eliminate all the interactions with strange dogs because a lot of the, the, the reactivity is, is a function of the anxiety the dog has about interacting with strange dogs. But as part of the training process, once we bring the dog into balance, into control, he's able to, to think a little bit, to control himself, we do manufacture interactions or the dog being in close proximity to other dogs on a regular basis because, again, we're training for the real world. And in the real world, sometimes you do run into off-leash dogs, you run into uh, strange dogs, there's no way to avoid the interaction, and it does happen. So we're not telling you that you should do this with your reactive dog. We're just showing you a part of our training process and how we would manufacture a healthy and structured interaction um, between two dogs, especially one that has had these um, issues in the past. Right? I don't want him to be too long. I don't want to drag it out. I want to have a positive reaction, a positive association, and then I want to leave the scenario pretty much. So I'm going to first start off by making sure that he's with me by using the loose leash. Break! I'm going to walk around with Logan and I'm going to make sure that he's paying attention to me. A lot of people think loose leash is just not pulling, but really in truth it's the foundation to everything because when my dog is doing loose leash, he's working for me, he's paying attention for me and I'm the most important thing in the world, far more than these other dogs here. The way I check for him tap tap oh boy as I walk around I don't walk in a certain very monotonous pace very easy to read I make it so that he really actually has to pay attention to me to stay with me go boy and I praise him if you look at his eyes he's always checking in and looking at me and this is what I want oh boy we're gonna walk by this little girl here. She's pretty intense, pretty reactive herself. But as long as Logan chooses a good choice, AKA ignoring or avoiding, nothing's gonna happen but go boy. Praise. What a go boy, Logan. So now I'm gonna have him walk up to this sweet little girl here. Let her sniff him. No. If he wants to leave the scenario, I walk away. Good. You can see that he's not the most comfortable with it, right? He's not the most social, but he's being very tolerant right now. And that's what I want to see from him. So now here's another male here, another bigger male. This is going to be a harder interaction because it's going to be more pressure, right? A sweet little dog like that really doesn't bother him. Oh boy. So right here, I'll end it. Ah, oh boy. And you can see that he got a little uncomfortable. And if you really got in close, you would see that he lifted his lip a tiny bit. I gave him a little soft no because the other dog was a little too much, a little rude in his approach. But the way he reacted was very well. And I'm very happy to see it. So now I'm going to have him approach this girl again. Good girl. Oh boy. <laughs> and as you can see, he doesn't really want an interaction. He doesn't really want to meet and that's okay. Not every dog is going to want to meet every dog, just like with people. So 
Some people are people people, some people are dog people. It's the same thing for dogs. You may prefer people and their company over dogs and that's all right. So one of the most important things when it comes to meeting new dogs is finding the right playmate, right? So we have two dogs over here. We have a sweeter, softer female and we have a more dominant, powerful male there, right? Out of the two of them, I'm gonna choose the female to have more close interaction with, right? And that's only because it's gonna be easier for him to accept. And it's gonna be easier for him to kind of let his guard down and accept the meeting, right? But with another male who's big as size, who's pretty much the same size as him, and who's pretty powerful, is gonna be really apprehensive. It's gonna be a little scary for him to really approach. And what I wanna do is make sure that it's gonna be calm and easy for him. If I see that I'm approaching a dog and my dog's really concerned, really worried, I won't really force an interaction because I don't want to put my dog in a situation where he's going to lose or he's going to fail. I want to set him up for success as best as possible. And the way I do that is by finding a nice, sweet, calm dog who's really social and who's really, really nice in general so that my dog can have the best chance at having a good interaction. So I'm going to walk towards Lindsay. And I'm going to be watching my dog's body language first and foremost. It's more important to watch him than it is to watch the other female. I want to see that he has an open mouth that's calm and relaxed. I don't want him to see his tail scorpion and I don't want to see it in between his legs either. This is pretty neutral. He's not too scared. He's not too happy. He's quite relaxed. So now I'm going to get a little closer. And this is okay, he's sniffing, right? He's wagging his tail. But I see. Oh boy, that he's getting a little intense. I see that his chest is coming out a little bit. I see that he has his mouth closed and his tail is starting to scorpion ever so slightly. I want to end the interaction before it becomes too intense for him or for her. So that he walks away from this scenario thinking, I met a nice dog. So now I'm going to approach this male. Oh boy. And you can see how he lifts his head a little bit and he kind of looks away. And that shows me my dog doesn't really want an interaction, right? It's like if you went to shake somebody's hand and they kind of pulled back, right? It shows me that he's not really enjoying this. And when I see that, I won't force my dog to be there and just stand there with another dog, licking his face, jumping all over him and making him uncomfortable. I want to remove him from that situation to show him that when you make a good choice, we leave, right? And that's the only way we interact with other dogs. Now we're going to have a little closer interaction with him. And you can see that he's a little worried and he's making better choices. Instead of interacting with her, he decided, you know what, I'm going to be a sit beside Hef. Because when I'm in a sit beside half, nothing bad happens. But when I make bad choices, I get corrected. So when I see my dog isn't really wanting an interaction break, I leave it at that. And I just want to build a neutral association first and foremost with other dogs. I don't want other dogs to be a party and I don't want other dogs to be a nightmare. 